All right, so <laughs> we we're, we're talking about momentum, right? So in my quote, we talk about movement. So movement gives you the momentum to make it happen, and that momentum gives you the motivation to continue to make it happen. We all have roadblocks that can kind of tend to stop us within our way. And I know for you, one of the big roadblocks is a potentially a language barrier. So when you're trying to achieve momentum, do you have a language barrier that tends to get in the way a little bit of making movement where you have to either translate or you have some things translate very well, do not translate very well? And does that stop your momentum? Well, I'll tell you a funny thing. I usually think in English and not in Dutch. So I, I absolutely do not like to record my videos in Dutch. So what's actually stopping me from creating momentum is that I need to find English speaking people here in the Netherlands or anywhere else in the world. So yeah, of course there are some words every now and then. Uh, Bonnie had, had a really good one uh, just recently. I was looking for the word reference book. Uh, I, I literally didn't know the word. So I said encyclopedia because well, that's to reference something of course with pictures. Um, but I'm, I'm used to sort of describing it. So, um, no, I, I don't let it stop me. That's the short answer. That's wonderful, you know, because a lot of times when people hit those roadblocks or those things within life that tend to kind of get in the way, it stops them dead in their tracks and they lose momentum and ultimately quit and give up. So for me, I'm truly blessed, truly thankful that you are gaining momentum and I've enjoyed watching your journey. Keep going. <laughs> Thank you so much. So Terry, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know you're big on movement and getting momentum by gaining movement. So I've seen you go outside and you said that movement is not necessarily easy for you. So how do you go about it? How do you keep going? The moment that you let your mind get in the way of the thing that you're doing, you'll procrastinate and it takes a split second. So when I'm outside and I'm running, I'm moving, playing sports, doing those things that are physical, because keep in mind, I am 100% disabled. I experience a lot of body pain. So when you see me on my Instagram videos, like running up the hill, running up the mountains, doing things back and forth, trust me that for two or three days after that, I'm in a lot of pain. So the thing is, is that I don't allow that to stop me or prevent me from doing the things that I want to do. I enjoy the moment, make that movement happen. Even though I know that I'm going to pay, pay the price later, I don't let my limiting beliefs stop me from having fun. So what would you say to other people if they say, I'm too scared to move because it might hurt or I don't know what's going to happen. What would you tell them? Just understand what your limitations and be willing to accept the risk. Oh, I love that. Accept the risk. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Awesome. Glad we could collab. Did I hear the question Terry asked you about? The language barrier. Okay. So uh, I, I loved him asking that question because he asked if it was a problem for me and I don't know. But I said, well, actually, no, I this in videos. I, I use it. Now, uh, let me tell you something about um, a language for me. Yes. I, I work in English, French, and Spanish. The thing is, when I get stuck for a word in one of the languages, I just fit it in, in another language when I'm talking. So it's it's like crazy, but sometimes it comes readily in one language than the other. So I just, even if I was speaking in English and I can't get the word in, in English, I just put the French word or the Spanish word. It's crazy, but I get along, I, I get along with that. But actually, I totally, I totally get it, you know, especially when I was in Spain, I was talking Dutch with the one I was there. Then I was speaking English with all of you guys. And of course there was Spanish over there. <laughs> and the Spanish, the, the Spanish people usually don't speak any English at all. And uh, the funny thing though, that I've noticed is when I'm around friends who are from the US and I'm there for a long time, 
for some reason, I start speaking Dutch and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, I'm speaking Dutch to you. <laughs> because there are certain things that, because there are certain things that you, ex you can better explain them in the language you master better. So when the explanation is not coming in the language you're speaking with, automatically you, you turn to the language that you master. I like what the, your t-shirt says, mom's gonna snap. <laughs> Thank you. I won this when I was pregnant with Sebastian, I think. Uh huh. So it's a nice sleep shirt now because I got it like three sizes too big on purpose to cover my belly. Oh, well, Anyways. we come to get so no worries. <laughs> <laughs> talking about, about snapping and, and uh, being a mom, um, I know that you have to, to be really careful with your energy and hence with the time when you decide to do things or not, or maybe change it. So if, if you really need your energy and you can't have too many distractions, what do you do in order to prevent from snapping? Oh, that's a good one. Um, so like losing my temper. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of that has to be done as like prep work, like ahead of time, setting yourself up. Cause there's a lot of things that will interfere with your ability to keep your cool. Uh, and I'm not using this, these as excuses, but I know for me, these are things that will definitely lower my tolerance for a lot of things, uh, especially like whining. Like I almost have zero tolerance for whining and I won't snap, but I make it very clear that it's just not, tolerated um but so i i i'm not gonna say i don't eat sugar but i'm very very low sugar um i watch my sugar intake pretty fairly closely uh because it affects my mood it affects my energy and um it makes me causes more can cause more pain more inflammation makes me sluggish there's this whole little laundry list of reasons uh dairy is the same way so i avoid dairy um for me, I tend to be snappier when I have not had enough sleep or not had quality sleep. Uh, it For me, that is probably the biggest thing besides what I'm eating that lowers my tolerance for different things. Uh, and then honestly, if I get myself in a situation where, or, or I've had a bad night of sleep, um, I try to be really mindful of the fact that it's not necessarily what the kids are doing that's bothering me. It's the fact that my tolerance for certain normal kid things is way lower and just for people in general at that point. Um, but that doesn't always work, right? Because we're human. So I still snap at my kids. And the thing that I do is make sure that I, when I calm myself down and I, you know, I walk away so that it doesn't escalate and I'm not screaming at them unnecessarily or anything. Cause not like 80% of the time, it's not necessarily what they're doing. It's how we're feeling about what they're doing. Uh, sometimes they are doing things on purpose to try to annoy the hell out of each other. Their, their, their little ones are boys. They do that. They have that kind of dynamic at this age. Um, but it's, it's not in most of these instances, instances for me, it's more how I'm feeling versus what is it that they're actually doing. Um, so if I do end up snapping at them, I, I walk away, I step away, I calm myself down and then I come back and I immediately apologize for my behavior because it doesn't matter what they're doing. Um, it doesn't warrant being screamed at and it doesn't warrant being, you know, being yelled at or, or whatever. Usually that's about as far as it goes is I'll yell and I'll scream. And sometimes I swear I do. I don't swear at my kids, but I definitely have sworn like in their presence. Um, and I, make sure to apologize for my behavior, explain what it is that I did wrong. Um, you know, I should have done this instead of this. I should have, because I'm setting them up for learning from my mistakes. So do in those moments, do you, do you think they understand that, that 
um, when when you're tired or you're in a lot of pain or whatever that that's the moment that you get snappy or you might yell at them I do tell them that but I also explain to them that's still no excuse to behave a certain way because I can't blame my behavior um, I can't I can't expect them how do I explain this so I expect them to have compassion and to try to be more gentle to people when they're not feeling well and whatnot. But at the same time, it's not their responsibility to make me feel a certain way. It's mine. And by teaching that and embodying that, that's a huge thing for them for the future. It has backfired in my face a few times, especially with them being eight and five. My eight-year-old has caught, up, caught on and is saying things like, well... It, it's not my responsibility to to make him feel good or I'm not responsible for his feelings. I'm like, yeah, but you're purposely in his face, irritating him, calling him names, and you're being unkind right now. So I'm not saying, like, like you're purposely trying to upset him and you're responsible for your behavior, which was being rude and obnoxious and name calling, which is not allowed in my house. Um, so it's really, like I said, just... Doing the best that I can, managing my energy the best I can, staying away from the sweets, trying to get a good sleep, setting myself up for a good sleep, um, but using myself as an example and pointing out specifically what it was that I did not like about my own behavior and what I could have done better and what I'm going to work on because I'm sorry is useless if you're not going to try to change your behavior. It doesn't mean anything and it's empty. And... I want them to, I want to do better with, with my younger two than I did with my older two. Um, and I want to set them up for being emotionally intelligent, responsible, kind human beings. So. Well, you've got quite the task ahead of you. <laughs> I thank you for doing so. Kudos. Thank you. Especially when you're tired that you try to refrain from snapping. So just just one other question. Say that you um, feel like, okay, this is the moment that I'm going to do X, Y, Z. So you're like, I'm, I'm really in the momentum and I got the energy. So what if you have to choose between you, you feel good enough to do that one thing that you really needed to build the energy for, but there's something else that you need to do too. How would you juggle between the two of them? So that really boils down to what your core values are and your priorities. Um, and that's going to be different for everyone. And it can also vary from day to day. Uh, so like I was, I was talking about earlier, since I've been so head down working on my course, but I'm still making time for my kids because they are a bigger priority than having a perfectly clean house for me, especially when I had OCD, clinical OCD and spent, nearly two decades of my life doing nothing but making sure everything was perfect and clean all the time um and and that meant telling my kids i couldn't spend time with them i refuse to do that anymore um so for me my priorities priorities are you know my health and uh taking care of myself and then my kids taking care of them and then the other stuff kind of comes in after that uh so it really just because so i've been spending all this time on my course and i've been hanging out with them but the house i kind of neglected the house for a while so today my priorities were not trying to figure out other ways to market my program today my priority was getting my house cleaned up so that i could feel better about that and um then my next priority was hanging out with my eight-year-old when he got home from school and then after that i had some time to do some other things so really just I, again it took me a long time to get to this place because the hierarchy in my brain used to be completely different and completely out of, out of whack, just to be honest, where I was nowhere near the top. I was somewhere near the bottom and that cost me my health. Um, and it, it, so it's shifted as my perception and priorities, uh, well, my priorities shifted as my perception shifted. And then my priorities now help me keep my perspective intact, basically, about what needs to get done and what can wait. Woohoo! Woohoo! All right, great job, ladies. Lady Lexi, you, I, I was starting to look at the chat and then I came back up on the screen. Can you uh, 
restate can you say your question to me because i'm having a tar hard time understanding it reading it and they feel like i'm missing something so maybe i can answer it for you let's see what did i write okay. let me see i'm gonna find it lady lexi what was your oh problem? well i said um you you must know i do not have children so i don't have to to uh keep an eye on anyone or anything um but you know when when circumstances would be ideal you okay. know when when i think when i've got the energy i've got the momentum and then people start pulling at me uh or better said i let them go ahead of me so i give them my valuable time i i i i tend to notice that i get all hyper and i get frustrated and if if i get hyper and i get frustrated i'm i'm not a good person to be around uh, because i i i really need to release all that energy so and and so my question was um because you do have children um do you relate to this do you, do, you, do you have something similar or do you feel something similar and how do you keep that that hyper feeling in check but i know i'm extremely hyper at times so so for me my explanation is going to be slightly on the spiritual slash woo woo side when you're feeling that you're really out of alignment with your your inner self um which is also related to your core values but your inner self is trying to to steer you in another direction and you're putting up the resistance and fighting back by giving your energy away to other people who should not be your priority at that point in time um and it is something that i've been encountering a lot more especially making this shift from making physical products into coaching and i'm on here all the time i can't be constantly interrupted like i could be could be when i was making t-shirts or hoodies or whatever apparel all the time and my workspace is in the middle of the dining room well a corner of our dining room but i was a hundred percent accessible 24 7 and i kind of got used to being literally tugged at by a four-year-old <laughs> mommy 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 um so when i started doing interviews and whatnot i found myself um having to or learning to set better boundaries and better expectations from them and not grooming them basically to continue behaving this way uh, by catering to them every five seconds or whatever it is. Um, and especially with my now five-year-old, I'm teaching him the value of patience, which for a five-year-old is tough, but I'm not setting my laptop down immediately when he wants some milk i'm not getting off the phone when he's trying to be you know do something or behave a certain way and really <clears throat> this applies to people anybody in your life that's used to having 24 7 access to you without you saying no or wait so for me it's making it's been making subtle shifts like I, I did interviews once or twice a week and then it picked up and then, it, you know, and I spent more time in up here in my bedroom talking to other people. But in the meantime, I'm setting boundaries with him and making him understand that although he is a priority, he's not always my number one priority. I know there's probably a million people they're going to watch this and go, <gasps> but like, <laughs> Like I have to be my top priority so that I can pour back into them, have the patience for them, have the, you Amen. know, do everything else that I want to do. And, uh, they also have to learn and understand that there are other things that are important to mommy. So, and that was hard for me at first to say, this is not more important than you, but this is when this, this has to happen at this time. And the thing that you want to do with me can wait 30 minutes and I promise I will give you X amount of time when I'm done with this thing. Uh, not no, just not right now. That's a big phrase that I've been using for like the past three, three years is I didn't say no. I said, not right now. You have to wait and then we can do whatever it is, you know, play your game or whatever it is that you want to do. Um, I also got really good at overlapping things. 
in your case though because they're not your children and i'm assuming they're not people that have to be in your immediate space all the time i, I would just suggest starting by setting better boundaries and you don't have to make this huge boundary leap <laughs> it's like a small boundary it's another small boundary because at first it's going to feel really icky and like you're like letting people down i know for me that was a big thing was like i don't want to let everybody down but i didn't realize that in the process of not letting everybody else down i was letting myself down because i wasn't getting any of the stuff that i would be really important for me to get done because i was putting out fires and doing things for everybody else so i hope that was helpful and if you need me to clarify anything i'm happy to do that well, no, I, 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 I get it. Uh, I, I have this saying like, uh, you are the rock. And if you're, if things start to crumble, you start to crumble, you can't serve your children. I mean, you can be the mom that you need to be. So I totally get it. And I, I had to learn over the years to say no to people. And it's usually when I schedule something uh, that, that when it takes longer, that's when you know the the hyper focus or the the, the hyper feeling start to to come in on my part so, so you feel like anxious hyper like yeah. are you feeling like jumpy like you're yes, like jumpy i i have a habit of being jumpy normally so i have had to learn to calm down so i i had to learn like there's there's this steam cooker and uh well it starts at one and then two and three and from three on it goes to ten plus like a pressure <laughs> cooker yeah yeah so that that really works for me but it, it's um i i've noticed that when i say to people no i can't do it right now because my my intonation and my voice might change because i know that if right now i would go with them it, it wouldn't end very well, at least not for me. So I, my, my, my intonation might change and it would be strict no. You know, same, same like for instance when, uh, and, and it, this might come across a little bit rude, uh, my behavior, but when, recently I was at the GP and I had my crutches in the car. So there were, I, I, there, there were people just coming in front of me in, in line, which was okay by me when I was waiting to ask my question, um, but I needed to know whether I needed to get, get my crutches out of the car. I needed to know if it was going to be a long time or not, because if it was going to be a long time, I would be in pain and that would, you know, that there was no uh, necessity for it. So when the guy turned around for a sec, I asked him, do you know if this is going to be a long time? Because if it is, I'm going to walk to my car and get my crutches. And he just looked at me, he stared at me, he got a total blank. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, that was the question. And then he started screaming, he was so annoyed. And I was like, okay, whatever, I just go to the car and I'll get my crutches. And then I started talking to someone else and, uh, and, and you could really see it. What? And he actually said it. How do you have the nerve to ask me that question when I was like, okay, I, I get it that, that you want to have that talk to that, but what do you want me to do? Tap on your shoulder, sit on the floor. I mean, I, I've sat down on the floor, you know, in shops and all that stuff, if, if needed. But, you know, especially the car was just two meters away. So it was like, yeah. Yeah, it well, sounds to me like, and it sounds to me like you're getting nervous when things take longer than normal because of what other people's reactions can, are going to be is that correct yeah you can say I've, yeah okay so i've experienced that with certain people um I, I just had a conversation with my husband about that that i was like i'm not doing this thing that i do anymore because i know it's not you that caused the problem in the first place and by not speaking up i'm just making the problem worse and it's never going to get fixed um but i was afraid to say anything to him about this for a long time because i was afraid of of backlash and that's a people pleasing and that's from past trauma um so i would wager to guess that this is i remember you talking about the differences between your mom and your dad in the past and the way they kind of you couldn't talk about stuff you know around your dad and I wager a guess that this might have something to do with that and you might have some unpacking to do because it's it's 
um, we're worried that we are going to upset someone or going to be a disappointment to them mm -hmm. or we're not going to fulfill what it is that we said. And we, in our minds, blow it way out of proportion when the other person's like, that really wasn't that big of a deal. And, and not in every case, obviously, but in a lot of cases, things are running over, we're running late, and the other person's understanding, and we're beating, standing here beating ourselves up over it. Lady Lexi, last words? Um, well, I'll, I'll just get Inside. into the no for a sec. Uh, I do know how to say no. I had to learn it. That's correct. Mm -hmm. um, now, if just other people would understand when I say no, I mean no, and there's no discussion, and you can be upset with me all you want. That would make the world a little bit easier. And I guess that the ones who had to learn to set boundaries, they get it. But those who haven't, that's, you know, there's the challenge.